to offer that it may be that that goal is needed to be covered by another sector group and to make a commitment to pass that on to the other sector group rather than dismissing and saying, oh, that doesn't have to do with our sector. Um, so that'll be a really important piece that I'd like you all to remember. Um, and then uh, the next, I guess I, I wanna pause there before we go on to the um, schedule and just ask if anyone has thoughts or questions or wants me to clarify anything. Um, just curious if um, they've now been assigned to the sector? Yes, every, uh, yeah, it's all in that sec uh, stakeholder list that you yep. all have access to now on the Google Drive. Okay. I just want to jump in real quick about that too, Andra, that if, if depending on who um, responds and who's attending, we don't want to have groups with too few numbers. So people are being invited to participate in a process, not a specific group, just so you're aware of how that's being, how the invitations are being worded. Perfect, yeah, and we'll sh shake things out um, however makes the most sense for the groups. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay, were there any other thoughts? I'm gonna make sure I'm not missing anyone. Okay, so then um, let's go to the uh, breakdown of the schedule. So in order to address these historical exclusions and cultural barriers, um, including the norms of white supremacy, which influence so many of our systems and structures, we'd like to provide an opportunity for both the committee members and community leaders to explore, learn, and communicate about racial justice, equity, and energy democracy and commit to moving forward with a vision of increased racial justice and equity in Amherst, um, both through this work with uh, the ECAC, but also as uh, an example of what can be done beyond what we're doing. Um, so the, the following schedule will allow for a facilitator who's outside of uh, the ECAC to come in with expertise on these issues and give us an introductory opportunity for both the committee and community members to do work first on these issues individually. So the you as committee members together and then community leaders separately um, to have an hour of uh, introduction and dialogue to explore issues of racial justice and equity and uh, then for a third hour for you all to come together in commitment and visioning before the sector group meetings begin. And then following that, we'll have uh, this uh, general briefing for everyone, all the other stakeholders, which um, we're calling sector group leaders to come together and have a, a briefing on the general logistics of the, uh, what the ECAC is doing and what the sector group, uh, what's the goal of having the sector groups and to have a, a brief recap around commitment to equity. Following those initial four meetings, uh, we'll have three sector group meetings to, to uh, work in, within the sectors, the four separate sectors. And then we'll come back together after for this meeting five, which will be broken down similarly to the first meeting with an hour for just committee members, an hour for community leaders, and then an hour together um, to reflect on the experience and for the community members specifically to give really pointed feedback. Um, and one thing that Ashwin was gonna talk about is um, that before sector group meetings and throughout, we want to offer one-on-one -on -one conversations um, as feels valuable to the community leaders because that can also be a really effective way of um, receiving 
uh, guidance from community leaders that's not in the format of uh, a more formal meeting uh, setting. So that wraps up what we were going to share. Any questions about that? Um, how do you want um, us to <clears throat> offer the one-on-one -on -one conversations? So most likely um, at this, at the initial stage, that will be offered um, either um, the community leaders can connect with Ashwin or myself. Um, and then as relationships are built or if there's a relationship that already exists, um, I encourage everyone to make themselves available to community leaders and uh, offer that and then allow community leaders to take you up on it as, as they would like to. And that's a part of the invitation is that, that that is going to be sort of a standing offer as a way for folks to participate if they'd like. And those one-on-one -on -one conversations will also be compensated. If someone even, yeah, if someone wants to do them in lieu of the meetings, or if someone wants to do some in addition to the meetings. Trying to see, make sure I don't miss anybody. Okay, well, thanks you all so much for letting me um, wrap that up and share it. And like I said, hopefully Ashwin will join later and please if um, more questions come up, um, connect with him or feel free to email me with anything further. Great. Okay. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, you all. I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. Okay. Yeah. okay. Bye. Okay. Um, so, I think that gave us a really good overview and reminder of what we talked about last time and um, sort of just clarified the path forward. So um, I guess I just want to open it up again for any thoughts, comments, concerns about the stakeholder participation plan um, before we sort of and if there's none, then I'll assume that we're we're good and we're gonna move forward. Yeah, Steve. I guess I just had some questions about the compensation for the community members. Um, that one that they seem to be picked and selected through a fairly kind of private process, whether that is um, okay with the town and human resources office and, and legal department? I can speak to that, Steve. Um, they're being compensated through the grant and uh, Linnaean actually, uh, Linnaean Solutions are the ones that actually um, did the outreach and are actually paying them through the grant funding that they have received. So it's not the town paying them, it's the consultant paying them. And Steve, uh, just a, a quick note on that. This is Jim. Um, so that's a process that we have worked out in a number of different situations for exactly the reason you're talking about. But the second part of that is that building those particular relationships is relatively delicate. And, uh, and so uh, being able to do it in a more personal way that's more about personal relationships uh, and less about a sort of an open call uh, um, makes it, in, in our experience, makes that a much more effective process. Um, and as we go along, the things may change, but it sets up a very solid foundation for uh, a really productive process. And then the second part of that is that in, um, you know, in some cases, uh, the I've actually probably in a bunch of them. Um, you know, that compensation turns out to make it very possible for people to have somebody do daycare or childcare 
during meetings. It makes it possible for people to put uh, this effort, uh, give it real, real attention. And, uh, and that is also a process that has um, been developed in a bunch of different settings. It's not our idea. Um, it's uh, sort of best practice in a sense, although it's kind of a lousy term, but, uh, and, uh, and so the, the process of how it actually rolls out has been kind of, uh, we're, we're following the lead of a number of organizations who, uh, who do this um, in, in, a, in bigger, more complicated situations. Good, thank you. Thank you for the um, background, the explanation. I do, um, I, I think that um, on the invitation piece, I think I understand that the want to keep the language as similar as possible, but there's clearly differences in the invitation we'll be sending to the community leaders and the sector group leaders, correct? In terms of the compensation, right? Okay. I don't think the compensation is listed in the invitation. Sorry, I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry, but um, I'm yeah. thinking yeah. it's real as the compensation. Lauren, go ahead. Sure. I was, I was just going to jump in and say, um, cause Ikaya had actually mentioned that, um, specifically. So it's, it's going to be removed from the invitation that goes out to everyone. And then they will speak, um, individually with the community leaders about the compensation piece. Okay. Yeah. Ghazi, Kai and I had had a conversation about that. That's why I knew we were taking it out. The other question I have, is about all the meetings and there's kind of a, a bunch of difference to me. It's not clear to me yet which times I need to set aside for those meetings and in the next 10 days. It, it looked like four or five hours of meetings in the next week and a half. It's not. Uh, so Steve, you have the ECAC members need to set aside Saturday, the set 27th from 4.30 to 5.30. Sunday is highlighting them up here too, Laura. Yeah. Okay. Sunday, okay, the 28th from three to four. So those are the two, I would say, really important ones. Um, so that's two hours. Then there's the meeting on the 30th, which we haven't set a time for. Um, this is going to be really kind of like an intro, or at least I see it as as being an intro, and will in included in the packet is a draft agenda. This is going to be an opportunity. There's a couple reasons why we're doing it it this way. I mean, from a ver from a to be completely transparent, we need to have four meetings before the end of of June. Okay. Um, so, and we don't want to rush doing a task group meeting until everyone feels ready to do that. So, but we know that with each of the task groups, we're going to need to give some basic instruction overview of what ECAC has been doing for the past year, what our goals are, kind of our ground rules in terms of how we communicate and work with each other based on some of the training we're going to get in these pre in these other meetings, a quick overview of the process. Um, we envision this being like a one hour intro webinar and we're gonna invite everybody to come, but we're also gonna record it so that if people can't make it, they can watch it before the first task group meeting. So if an ECAC member can't make it, they also will have that opportunity to watch it. So I would say there's two hours of, of meeting, three hours, two hours definite, three hours ideal, um, yeah. And we could, and I don't know if, uh, I don't know, Stephanie, if you have any thoughts on when we should do that meeting on the 30th or not. No, well, I, I wanted to sort of get a sense from the group um, because it's a Tuesday, what times might work? Would it be better to have it a bit later? Um, I have, Gazikai and I haven't really checked in about the community leaders either. So um, I'm assuming that 
smack dab in the middle of the workday is probably not great for people. So um, if I had a sense of what might work for the majority here, we could also do it. Um, I could do a doodle poll and check back with um, Gazikaya as well. I could do it that way. Does anybody have thoughts about what might work for that? The, the other thing I'd just like to note uh, it, about that, uh, both Laura and, and Stephanie, is that um, it is, we end up with sort of a little bunch of different things going on, but they all are very important. And it's taken a while to figure out, okay, what do we actually have to have here? Um, and that that meeting on the 30th really, there's a real opportunity for sort of the whole group, including all of the other invited people and all the things to kind of like, okay, let's gather up here. Let's circle up and head off on a project. And because uh, it, it's taken a, bit, a little bit of work to get there. So while it, you know, you don't necessarily have to participate directly, I think there's a real opportunity to, to kind of build the full vision of what this, the whole process is like uh, in that, which could be pretty great. Yeah, Darcy. So um, <clears throat> that's in less than two weeks. Um, so when do we foresee sending out the invitations? Um, they're going to be going out as soon as possible, um, probably Monday. And people are getting invited via email. They're not getting sent in the mail. They're going out by, via email. So they'll go out probably Monday. What was the time of the Sunday meeting? It's going to be from um, three to four. I wanted to add too that um, I did talk to Paul Bachelman about it um, as well, and he and I are likely going to sign the invitations. So we'll have the the invitation will be an attachment. So it will give me an opportunity when I'm reaching out to staff within the town to actually sort of craft something that's a little bit direct to their expertise, and um, then the the invitation will be attached. That's actually similar to how we did it with the MVP process. Okay, any other thoughts, concerns? Right now we're just sort of, I think, agreeing to the plan for these first four meetings. Um, the different stakeholder groups and and we're still, um, and, and Stephanie's got our, all of our input on the stakeholder list. And like, like Ghazi Kaya said, we're gonna, um, the intent is to keep the stakeholders the way that we've organized them, but we're not gonna invite them specifically to a task group, just in case over the next couple of weeks as we're finalizing our task groups and looking at the numbers that we, um, don't decide actually this person would be a better fit for this group. Um, we don't anticipate having to do much of that, but it just, we don't want to, it, it seems like that it'd be easier just to kind of hold off on that piece of it. Um, does that sound okay with everybody? Okay. Um, I'm not hearing any other questions or concerns. So are we good to move on to um, the previous agenda items? Yeah? Okay, great. Um, 
So let's just back up a minute and go to, um, yeah, can you give me one second, please? Very cool. Um, staff updates. Sorry. Um, so I've been working with the um, intermunicipal community choice aggregation folks, and we've um, sent our invitations out for a legal consultant to help us uh, work on the aggregation, develop the aggregation plan that will then um, go before the DPU um, for approval and they'll help us with that entire process. So that's um, a, a really big step forward once we secure the, the legal expertise to help us with that. Um, we're also um, on a parallel track, um, also developing the joint powers agreement for the three municipalities. And so we're looking at different models from other communities in California, um, as well as looking at the Cape Light Compact, but sort of looking to investigate what pieces of those agreements make sense for um, our effort and um, or our vision or have a vision that we'd like to sort of pursue and implement for ours as, for this one as well. So that's moving forward. Um, the solar landfill um, is moving forward. We've got most of the permitting in place. So that's really exciting. And the um, project is slated to be developed in 21. So that's been quite a slog. <laughs> so really happy about that. Um, and what else? Um, those are kind of the top things that are in the forefront of my mind at the moment. Unless there's questions for Stephanie, um, we can turn it over to any updates from ECAC members. Um, I had a question, Stephanie. Okay. Are there any um, upcoming grant deadlines or you know that things that you can anticipate you'll you'll be needing to work on or or you heard at the NEMS conference that you know are going to be coming down the line. Um, I think um, there may be, I'm, I don't have them in front of me. Um, I can tell you that um, we applied for green communities funding uh, for 116,000 for some projects, um, specifically some lighting retrofit projects. Uh, and we should hear about that fairly soon, I would think within the next few weeks, I'm hoping. Um, I don't have any other grants at the moment that we're applying for because we have a lot going on right now. So um so there are grants that are you know the mvp um action grant is open right now but we're in the middle of working on ours so it didn't seem like a prudent time to be um applying for something else right at this moment those heat pump grants um stephanie yep um so i don't know when those are i think those those I think have been kind of ongoing, so I can look into those again. I just like I can't tell you. I have a whole list and notes, but I didn't have. I wasn't prepared to speak about the grants we're looking into right now. So I'm happy to look into them and report out next time or at a different time. Okay. Jesse. Um, yeah, I, I I don't want to put you on the spot, but I uh, I. If Sarah, I don't know if you have a minute to just say who you are and it's great to meet you. My name's Jesse. I'm a local architect and Amherst resident for 10 minutes. I don't want to take up a lot of our meeting, but I'd love to give you a chance if you want to just a minute to just say hi. I've never met you before, just once maybe. <laughs> oh, so my fingers are fat. That's the first thing. That's why I turned off the video and didn't unmute myself that very quickly. Um, I'm a town councilor and I'm a representative of District One. Um, I have I have a farm. My husband and I own a farm in North Amherst, which his uh, parents bought, his grandparents bought in 1919. Um, so until about let's see, three years ago, I mostly farmed. 
Um, I don't know. I've been in Amherst since I was 20. I graduated from the University of Massachusetts. I only have a bachelor's degree, which is in English. Um, I like cats. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to be on this committee. A lot of this information is new for me, but having a background in farming, I find it really exciting and I'm glad to be here and I would be happy to answer any questions you have about me or my background. That's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Do you want to have a quick go around, Laura? Sure. Um, I'm Andrea. You've seen me some, some places, and I'm um, part of Mothers Out Front, so I'm an activist. I also am involved with the um, community choice aggregation um, planning team. Um, and I am going to be a little involved with a new venture that maybe we'll be talking about the building electrification um, program that, um, yeah, maybe, maybe that'll be part of updates. Um, and yeah, other things, that's enough. <laughs> Welcome. Anybody else want to go? I'm Laura. I'm the chair of the committee. Um, I have lived in Amherst now for six years, I guess. Um, formerly at Amherst College. Now I'm working for Ceres, which is an NGO based in Boston. Um, yeah, excited to have you. <laughs> Sarah knows me. I do know. I do know Darcy. <laughs> We see so much of each other, actually. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Um, Dwayne Breger. Um, I may, um, live in Amherst in Echo Hill um, neighborhood. Um, on and off in, in uh, Amherst, mainly on, uh, for probably about 30 years. Um, I'm at UMass uh, and direct the Clean Energy Extension there. It's nice to meet you. Good to meet you. I'll tell you, hi, I'm Steve Roof, and I am a professor at Hampshire College. I do Earth and Environmental Science. I've been doing a, quite a bit with the energy monitoring at Hampshire College and the solar arrays that we've got, and I've been uh, learning some some aspects of that. So I've actually taught a course on renewable energy, which is probably more educational for me than the student. Um, <laughs> And I think I'm also participating in this building electrification program sponsored by the Rocky Mountain Institute that Andre mentioned. So look forward to meeting you in person sometime soon. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Jesse, Sarah. Hi, Hi. <laughs> the other Sarah. With an Hi, H. other Sarah. <laughs> I'm glad to see what you have an H. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm not new to Amherst. It's been almost two years now, but I, I still feel very new. Um, I work for a global architecture firm. I've been in the architecture or construction industry for about 12 years now. And, and I take, um, what do we call it? I take complex ideas and distill them down into marketable uh, language. So that's kind of my niche and um, passionate about climate change like like everybody else <laughs> jesse I'm, I'm at a small local firm and i take simple ideas and i make them very complicated <laughs> we're a good pair <laughs> Sorry, the same we're thing. building <laughs> task group together i also i'm in south amherst and i've got i wouldn't quite call it a farm but some animals some stuff i i'm a big fan glad to have a Another farmer on the crew. Awesome. Great. Um, yeah, thanks, Sarah. I'm glad you could join us. Thanks, everybody. Um, 
Do we have other ECAC member updates? I have one. Okay. Um, I think if you remember, uh, we, uh, I was assigned to contact the finance committee and the JCPC about just reminding them that we had made a, a budget request and where it stood and that was before COVID-19 and then just recently we asked to see where it stood and Andy Steinberg got back to me and asked if we, uh, if we wanted to present at a finance committee meeting um, either this week, that date has already passed, or next Tuesday. Um, and so we just have to decide whether we're going to do that. And, I, you know, I also thought about the fact that, you know, we're kind of operating in a vacuum to some extent, like nobody knows what we're doing. Uh, you know, I occasionally bring up when there's a budget discussion that, oh, by the way, we have these climate goals and we're supposed to be doing something within the next five years. So if we have a five-year plan, it would be nice if it somehow acknowledged the fact that this is something that we're going to have to think about. Um, so I just think that it would be good to, um, I mean, we could talk to the finance committee, but I think we should probably also make an appointment to just talk to the town council and give them an update. And, you know, they may just say, give us an update in writing, which is an option, I suppose, but it's just, um, it would be nice if there was, if we were, had some visibility about what we're doing over the next year. Darcy, if you recall, we had started scheduling appointments. That's why Andy had us on an agenda because just before COVID hit, I was working with you all in scheduling you to meet with different committees in right. the community. And then COVID hit and that kind of went away. We could um, probably start getting on uh, virtually now. I could get back to trying to coordinate that with each of you. Um, I can go back to my notes and find out who was wanting to meet with which committee, unless you remember, um, but I can coordinate with you all offline. It doesn't have to be during this meeting. If you all want to spend time doing that over the next, I mean, we've got a lot coming up with the sector work, so. so should, shall we plan on doing the finance committee next Tuesday? In which case, I mean, that we're, that's when we've been invited to come. And is it just, and that was just a general introduction as to who the committee is and what the committee is doing. That was the um, intention of it originally. Well, but, actually, he was responding to my, to our, um, Laura had assigned me to just send out a reminder about our budget request. So it's a com it would be a combination of just an update and, you know, there's no way they're going to do anything with our budget request in, the, in FY21 but it would be a way of saying, this is what we asked for. Can it carry over until the next fiscal year? Um, and also, by the way, we're also doing this other, you know, we're getting our climate action plan going. Yes? Yeah, I mean, I think it does, I don't think that hurts. I, I don't see why we, why, why we wouldn't do that, if, particularly if somebody's available to do it. I'm not personally available to, meet during the work day. Um, but, uh, and I think giving an update to the town council seems good, a good idea as well. We can update them on that we're starting this process and, and kind of what we're doing. Um, I guess I would just look for guidance from someone on what makes sense there. And maybe that's the role Sarah of Sarah and Darcy. I don't know. Um, well, that's up to you, Laura. Um, it, it, I mean, it's up to the whole committee. But if, um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, I personally think that we should have some kind of presentation to the council. If we're not going to, um, if we're, you know, we have a plan that We'll, we'll probably present to them in what November or something like that for an annual report. 
Um, but it would be nice to present to them in August or some time like that to just to let them know what's going on. When I brought it up with Sean Mangano during the, the budget, um, the finance committee meeting, um, he was great. He just said, um, you know, I brought up the, the resident capital request and asked if it was going to be carried over to the next year. And he said, he, he said, uh, yeah, and we're going to just be reconsidering a lot of things in the fall. And so um, it would make sense to me to see if we could get on the agenda of the town council. And if we did that, we wouldn't need to speak to the finance committee. Um, we could if we could just speak to the whole town council, mm -hmm. even for 10 minutes, get on the agenda for 10 minutes in August um, or September. I can coordinate that for you. Okay, does anybody have any other thoughts on that? Or otherwise we can just plan on, yes, Sarah. Again. Oops, fat fingers. So Darcy, what I'm wondering is, that are you thinking that you would um, want to have just before town council to give this this committee more faces that, that um, so that when town council thinks about ECAC and thinks about funding, that they're really, um, by seeing the members of this committee and their faces there, that they're thinking more of ECAC is not just, um, Sometimes I think it'd be thought of as just a town council thing, but I think it's impressive to see how many, you know, people, intelligent, passionate people are on this committee. Is that what you're thinking? Is that it would be sort of a, a show of, not really a show of force, but more <laughs> impressive to see faces <clears throat> there yeah. than just town councilors? I think it's partly that this process that we're undergoing right now that we're starting uh, the climate action plan process is is going to extend for a whole year, and it's it's just very possible for the town council to completely have no like Andy said in his email that he doesn't have any idea what we're doing, um, and it you know at the end of that year presumably we're going to have some concrete plans, and so it's good for the town to know. You know, just so it isn't a big shock at the end of the year that they know just generally the direction that we're going in and that we're going to have these task forces and they're going to look at these different areas and make recommendations. And so, um, and just to remind them that, that, that they did, you know, adopt these goals and that's what this is all about. And yeah, just to keep, to keep us in their visibility, you know, because it feels like every time I bring it up in the council, it's like, oh, you know, it's like sort of a jolt, you know, like, <laughs> what's she talking about? <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, Sarah. Yeah, so I think that was really hard is that even as a counselor, I think I'm finding a hard time sort of um, keeping track of what other committees are doing even when we get reports, I feel like things happen in meetings and they're not always included in reports. So maybe if you have, if you have a timeline written out, so maybe a, in August, if most counselors are gonna be there, to have an actual, just a quick slide presentation of the timeline and the tasks. And then I know that I just started, so liaisons just started. I just had my first um, meeting with the um, uh, Council on Aging. So maybe it, either you or I could maybe do, or Stephanie, we could just, we could ask that um, ECAC be on that list. So on our town council agenda, there's now going to be a list of liaisons and that we're gonna have to report out. So maybe we, we might wanna do that so that we keep um, ECAC and, and how it's doing and its agenda um, almost, you know, at least once a month or any pertinent meetings. That's just an idea. Can, yeah, I guess I, I don't know about that. Uh, is that a good idea? Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea, but um, maybe not for the committee to do that. That sounds like a counselor thing. So, but I do like I the idea of us 
going back to some of the committees that we were going to it still no, I think it was, oh i'm sorry i was just thinking this so that there'd be a larger maybe a larger um uh just even if it's a slideshow coming from you guys about what you're tackling this year and your timelines and then i was just saying to darcy she or i could make that report out to town council you know sort of like liaisons every you know other week or a month just so that what ECAC is doing, their timeline um, and their tasks are being reported out so that it's always in the minds of town councilors. I was just yeah. wondering if that'd be helpful. That's a great idea. I mean, that's on our agenda of every town council meeting is that the council committees report. So we could just be on that list. That's what I'm thinking because it would be a regular way for us to keep that in in uh, town council's mind so they're on board and nothing takes them by surprise yeah yeah great idea in your first committee meeting <laughs> oh can't hear you um, all right bye um got to take okay notes. so we'll put that on the stephanie will organize that but i think um Sarah and Darcy, I would put it to you to get the ECAC on that list of the committee updates. Um, any other ECAC member updates? Wayne, yeah. Yep, um, so uh, thanks. Um, I am uh, working under, a, a f trying to finish up a grant that I have from the uh, Renewable Thermal Alliance, which is out of Yale University. Uh, in which I developed a um, spreadsheet model uh, that looks at, uh, really gets at this uh, transition from uh, in the building sector, heating sector, uh, particularly from um, uh, fossil fuels to um, renewable heating um, and, um, and really what the implications are with, are with regard to uh, greenhouse gas emissions, um, cost, investment costs, operating costs, um, and, um, uh, um, uh, and, and, and greenhouse gas emission savings um, and allows a region, uh, be it a town or a, a region or a state um, to um, assume some sort of rate of market penetration uh, and see um, what it would take to get there and what the Im uh, impacts would be uh, in terms of greenhouse gas reductions. And I'm, uh, part of my grant is to um, develop a case study um, and I'd like to do that to, uh, with Amherst um, and feed that into the committee um, as at least a, a data point or starting point to look at uh, what we face, uh, particularly in the building sector, um, for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and I guess I'm wondering whether uh, there'd be interest uh, and if we could um, maybe schedule some time at one of these meetings after some of the stakeholders um, engagement is done. I'm thinking maybe more like in later July, early August uh, to uh, not only for me to, uh, my, my goal is two, two purposes. One is to really help with this committee. Uh, the second is to actually um, uh, uh, show this to somebody so I can get some feedback um, and, uh, and critical feedback <laughs> uh, so I can do some uh, updates and revisions as necessary and then, and make it, and then uh, make it better. Uh, and so wondering if that would be of interest and um, not to schedule right now, but um, at some committee uh, uh, meeting in the future um, to, you know, maybe dedicate 20 minutes or something um, for this. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Dwayne, if you just want to send a note to Stephanie and I with like what the agenda item will be. Sure. Um, we can see and it, when you'd prefer. To yeah, have. that's the iffy part. It's like when I can get to it. Uh, but okay. let's, let's think about later July. Uh, but I'll, okay. I'll, uh, no, it, with um, plenty of notice, um, I'll let you know when I think I'm ready. Um, and then we can uh, schedule it the next available um, uh, slot that's available. Yep. Great. Can you send us something, Dwayne? Do you have anything in writing that you could provide? Well, not with the uh, not with Amherst um, as the case study, but in terms of just a uh, short description of the modeling itself, 
Um, yeah, I can do that. I really haven't written too much up, but I did a, a, um, a, a PowerPoint um, on it uh, a while back. Um, so I could send that along via, right. via Laura, I guess, and then she can distribute it, yeah. Yeah, sounds great. All right, thanks. Okay, um, let's move on. Um, Stephanie, or not Stephanie, sorry, Darcy, um, you had added an item about uh, requesting that the town manager add to the school building committee charge the requirement of at least one person with zero energy building expertise. Right. Um, yeah, I just wondered if we could get a letter from ECAC to the town manager urging him to do that. Um, that currently there's a charge for the school building committee. It just came out last week. And um, it doesn't specifically say that anyone on the committee is required to have expertise in zero en energy building. So since we do have a bylaw and since we're sort of like on the cutting edge globally of <laughs> zero energy municipal buildings, um, it seems like that should be in the charge. Um, uh, so just wondering if we could just send a send a, a letter from ECAC that is like two sentences urging him to do that. Yeah. Jesse, did you have a comment? Yeah, they are they it states we're seeking members of the public who are interested in serving, including a resident with experience in energy efficient public architecture, engineering, or construction. And then other and then teachers and, and then right. other so and so it, that's the phrase we're looking to goose up. I'd be happy to write it. I would write it not just for net zero. I would think someone that has a, a broader understanding of carbon embodied operational climate change renovation and new construction is how I would write it. And I could, um, what do I do? Where do, who do I send that to? Yeah, so I think if you want to, Jesse, that's great. It would be awesome if you could write that. Um, if you want to send it through to me and Stephanie, I think we can, I mean, you could just send it on behalf of ECAC as well to Paul through Stephanie, um, but maybe just CC both of us. Okay. And um, then I think we could just send it straight through to Paul, but I think having Stephanie CC'd is important because then she can follow up on that. Am I right, Stephanie? Yes, thank you. And then I would just add, so that's a committee slot that's open and I understand maybe also there's a slot that will be opening up on the planning board. No, there's actually two slots opening. Which I feel like is a place with a huge amount of leverage and I know all of us are probably maxed out, but but if in our networks we know people who could fit either in that commit school committee or the planning board slots, I think would be we should use our networks. Yeah, the planning board is probably going to try to select sometime during the summer. They haven't had an, a large enough pool yet to conduct interviews, but um, uh, I know of one person who uh, has a has an energy efficiency um, background who's going to apply for the planning board. But we do need to f see if there's more people that are interested. Definitely. Yeah, and Jesse, I would just suggest. I mean, I don't think we need to send a long note to Paul, but I mean, I don't think it hurts to mention to start with the school committee building committee. And then also mention that for committees like the planning board, it's we should be considering people with these these expertise. Yeah, that that seems great. Yeah, Sarah. I keep talking. I'm sorry, but I'm on the CRC, and we appoint planning board members, and we are going to be down like three members. So we desperately need people, and. If you could, if any of you have people in your circle that you think would be great, please, please, please have them apply. We desperately need good people. And I think that people having this background would be amazing. So please do. Great. 
that's helpful to know. Okay, um, so sounds like that's, we're good there. Thank you, Jesse, for stepping up. Um, so let's move on to, um, let's kind of go back <laughs> to uh, the climate action planning process, next steps on task groups. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lauren or Jim here. Thank you, Laura. I'll just, um, Stephanie, I can pull up the slides if you don't okay. have them. That's totally fine. Here, I've got it. Okay. Bear with me one second. Awesome. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, so this first slide is really just to outline how we've decided to assign consultants to the various task groups. Um, so after some conversations with Stephanie and Laura, we thought it would be um, wise to have designated consultants for each um, pair of co-chairs to call on if, um, if looking for support in creating any materials. Um, working with on any aspects of the planning um, and just sort of being in conversation about uh, the task group process. So we have um, Jim working with Sarah and Jesse on the buildings group and with Dwayne and Andra on the renewables, electricity, and CCA group. And I'll be working with Ashwin and Steve on the land use and natural systems group and with Jesse and Laura on the transportation and non building infrastructure for, uh, task group. Um, also just to note that Kazi Kaya, I think we've already said this, but they'll be present at all of the task group meetings as sort of a community leader liaison. Um, and as they mentioned, we do have um, one participant who will have a translator with them. Um, so part of that will also be just to, um, they'll be present to uh, act as a, an advocate for um, the, the person who's needing translation to make sure that um, people are speaking slowly enough and that the, the translator interpreter has enough time um, to make that uh, interpretation happen in a smooth fashion and to allow for that person to contribute to the conversation. Um, so that's, that's really all that this slide was meant to cover, um, just so that you all know that you can turn to these, um, to your assigned consultants with any questions, any ideas, um, and as we move forward in the process of um, developing agendas and things like that, um, finalizing agendas for the, the various meetings that you'll be working closely with those folks. Um, Lauren, can I just uh, jump in real quick here for of course, one second? Yeah, please do. So I just want to state that um, the consultants that are assigned to your groups should be copied on any correspondence uh, as we move forward in planning the sector group work. So anything you're doing, you should be including them because they're there to assist you and help you with the facilitation. And also um, the same goes for me because we're here to support. And especially now, I think, you know, with the crazy formatting that we have to deal with, um, it's really important to sort of have that kind of support. So. Um, please know that you should definitely be copying them on everything um, as you go forward at this point. Sorry, Lauren, go ahead. No, not at all. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, I think that is a really important point, just knowing how we're sort of constrained with the open meeting law, um, that we can be that, that liaison um, and, and that support to develop things that, um, so that we're not in violation of any of that. Jesse, I see you have a question. Just to clarify, you, Stephanie, we see, see so I would CC Jim and Stephanie on every, and Sarah, that would be the thread. Okay, thank you. And um, I think uh, for Sarah Schwartz, we should maybe loop you into the land use and natural systems group. Um, so Great so, idea. Uh, just kind of noting that, Steve, for you and, and Ashwin um, and Lauren. Thanks, Laura. Um, Sarah, excited to have you. And um, 
Yeah, I guess I didn't introduce myself when I started talking for Sarah's sake. So I'll just say briefly now, uh, my name is Lauren De La Parra. I'm a member of Linnaean Solutions uh, team member, and we are a consulting firm focused on climate resilience uh, and sustainability planning. I'm also a fellow UMass Amherst alum um, and uh, very much missing the Valley right now in the summertime. So, um, okay, so moving on. The, uh, we created this slide just um, to Steve's point earlier, clarify what's coming up. Um, and so there's no confusion so that everyone has this in a succinct format. Um, so the slides will, I'm sure can be sent out um, afterwards so everyone has this for reference. Um, but as we've already covered, we have the, the meetings with the community leaders, the, uh, both the committee and then those two groups together coming up toward the end of the month. And then we'll have that one hour sort of kick off um, meeting on the 30th, um, not sure what time yet. And as Stephanie mentioned, that will be recorded as well. So if folks can't make it, they'll be able to view it before the, the sector work starts. Um, and then we have the sector groups, the task groups um, that will be coming up um, starting in July. And those three meetings are gonna be focused on strategy identification, prioritization, and then implementation and monitoring sort of loosely. We don't have, um, specific agendas for those yet. And the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so we were asked to speak Lauren, to- I just ask, or- Oh yeah, of course, sorry. Um, do folks have preference? I mean, I think we should shoot for the af evening, but like five to six, six to seven, seven to eight, eight to nine, it feels like it needs to be somewhere within that time frame. You're talking about the 30th? Yeah. Yeah, that early evening would be better for me. I, I have a meeting already at seven. Okay. Maybe yeah, it would be good to know sort of what folks' conflicts are so that we can work around those. So Andrew, Andrew is your meeting um, seven to eight or seven to nine? Uh, seven to eight thirty. <laughs> seven to eight thirty, okay. So would five or six work with the rest of the members of the group? I have a meeting that I shouldn't miss that ends at 530 on, okay. on, on Tuesdays, basically. But so five, but I could start sharply at 530. Okay. All right. So that gives us, Stephanie, you think that gives us a range and, you know, we'll do our best with the rest of the group and other meetings that the town may have on um, to schedule something for that. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so we were just asked to speak to how the task groups are going to work in this virtual format. And much like the committee meetings, they will need to be in webinar format, which I know is a little bit of a bummer. We can't do breakup breakout groups um, for the same reasons that we came up against last time we tried to do that, which is the, the potential for Zoom bombers um, and, and also most importantly, conforming to the open meeting law. Um, so we won't be able to do breakout groups. We will be doing it in webinar format with all of the um, participants as panelists. And then if there are members of the public that come and, and want to comment or um, give feedback, then they'll be um, allowed to watch the proceedings and then uh, um, given time to, to chime in um, as needed. And then, of course, as leaders of these task groups, you'll be welcoming everyone into the process, recapping the purpose of the meetings. Um, and as Kazikaya had presented some of those group agreements um, earlier, I guess last week we focused on those. Um, we'll want to probably reiterate those at every meeting. Um, and, and just to frame the meetings conversation since each of the meetings will be focusing on different things. Any questions before I move on? I have a question. Um, I strongly have been advocating for um, allowing members of the public to be visible at meetings. Um, we, I did this at uh, my District 5 meeting and it, it felt really good. Um, 
one way to provide security for a meeting like that is to, to require that people register. Um, so I, I just know it's like super doable to have a people friendly meeting on Zoom that is secure. Um, so um, to the extent that we could do that would be great. And you know, it's not that we would have that many members of the public, but it would be nice to be able to invite them into the meeting so that they're visible, even though, you know, their mics might be off, they might they they might not be able to speak unless called on or something like that. Um, anyway. Yeah, I, I, totally. I think the the we want to be able to accommodate that, of course, to the utmost extent possible. I think if folks are panelists, just the limitations of Zoom, if folks are panelists, then they are able to meet and unmute themselves. But I think um, there, there shouldn't be an issue with that if we're um, already familiar with folks. Stephanie, I can't speak to the question of registration. Um, I, I have to, uh, I am going to push back on the registration piece because that's just logistically going to be really challenging. Um, to just have people register for um, the sector work, which really, I mean, it, at this stage, uh, I'm thinking that this is a lot, Darcy, if you remember the when we had the MVP planning process, there was initially just the, you know, the, the time when all the stakeholders gathered together, we were in gro breakout groups, and we were able to have a conversation, um, a facilitated conversation. And I think that's kind of what you want to be doing with this work as well. And it seems to me that if we're just opening it up to people to generally come in, it's really going to sort of muddy the process of what we're trying to do. There will be opportunity when we're getting community feedback, maybe on um, a plan draft. But I think at this stage, when you're trying to actually get the meat of the work, you don't have that many meetings. It seems like a lot, but you really don't. Um, and I, I really, I, I would say that I would push back a bit on, on that idea. Technically, if we were doing this as part of the process, we wouldn't, it wouldn't even necessarily be, it would be like the, the planning process. Um, right. We're in a room. We've just heard from a lot of members of the public who uh, are attending our meetings as attendees in a webinar and they don't have any way to like know who else is there. They have no way. But you, you are, you're assuming that people from the public are gonna join our task groups meetings? Maybe, yeah. Well, I don't know. We can see Art right now. Yeah, maybe five people. Um, that's because we've allowed him in. Otherwise- um, An attendee, he's not a participant. He's an attendee and he shows up? Um, yes. No, you, you share. Someone, someone I, did not, I did not elevate him to, he is in my attendee list. He is the only one. Sounds like that solves our problem then. Um, if folks are still able to be visible, but are not panelists. So. Well, yeah, if they're visible, I've never seen that before. So that is very interesting. I may have allowed it. It might be that when I set up the meeting, I allowed for that. So. so Darcy, we can investigate that and, and see what's possible with Zoom. It sounds like it sounds like given that Art is here and we can see him, but he's not a panelist, that it is possible. So that that's great. Hopefully yeah, that's I the case. I think that's a great a great thing to figure out and probably be valuable uh, moving forward as an option in lots of different settings. So that's cool. Totally, since we don't know when yeah. we'll be able to meet in person again. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, Dwayne. Yeah, I just had a question. I'm um, just, again, trying to figure out the scope and, and how this is being, um, these invitations and so forth. I guess my question is, it did relate to a comment earlier. Um, and I'm just trying to wonder how the um, um, task force members, I forget all the terminology, but the people we're convening, <clears throat> task group members, are they going to be, what sort of context are they, they going to be given in, in the invitation? Do they know that there um, are f uh, four other uh, task groups going on, covering different things? Um, and it gets to the point of, you know, when they start a conversation that is really belongs maybe in a different task force, are they going to be 
aware or do we have to explain all that? Um, to me, it would seem helpful if there's a, an email that go, you know, the invitation sort of lays out the context um, within the broader um, stakeholder engagement that we're doing. Yeah, Dwayne, that's a great question. I think the, the first thing that we're gonna do um, that will help people give people that context um, is gonna be that meeting on the 30th, the one hour sort of kickoff meeting that's really intended to be the contextualizing moment. Um, so that's where folks will find out about the other task groups and the, the variety of topics being covered, sort of the big picture of the process. Um, we're also creating a sort of welcome packet um, uh, it's going to probably end up being a three or four page document that just sort of gives a high level overview of this process and also of the work that's already been done to date um, through the MVP process and through all of the ECAC's outreach work. Um, so folks will have that as well as sort of a tool to ground them in the, the larger process. I knew we were in good hands. Good. <laughs> um, and, and, and I was also confused So the 30th meeting um, is not just the community leaders, but it's all for all the task force, uh, the yes. task groups. Gotcha. Yes, sorry if that wasn't clear. Yes, no. that, that meeting on the 30th is intended to be for everyone who's participating in the process. Great. You give it like the launch meeting. Yeah. It's really yeah, the exactly. launch of what we're about to do. Yeah, nice. I have a similar question. Is for each of these meetings, uh, is there an identified um, person or persons who who are really the leader of the meeting, who are running it, setting the tone, et cetera, et cetera? That's a really good question, Jesse. And I think actually um, I'm gonna go to the next slide to address it because um, your question, the answer to that question really depends on how big these groups end up being. So we wanted to sort of frame this conversation a little bit because um, as Stephanie already mentioned, as we're inviting folks and we're inviting folks into this larger process because we want to leave flexibility in how the groups end up being constituted because if we end up with a ton of respondents for one group and hardly any for another, we want to be able to even out the group sizes and make sure that we're not dealing with, you know, wildly different group sizes because it really does influence what the process ends up looking like. So if we have smaller groups, then that process can be more conversational can be a little bit more intimate and we end up getting much deeper perspective from folks. Um, so it tends to need a little bit less um, rigid facilitation, less, less sort of structure. Whereas if we end up with a large group, um, then we're probably going to want to structure and facilitate that. We're definitely gonna to wanna to structure and facilitate those processes much more tightly. Um, and we'll end up getting a breadth of perspective, which is great. Neither, neither option is better than the other. It's just a difference in how we end up orchestrating these processes. So I would say with the small groups, because there's more room for conversation um, and just a little bit more of a conversational tone, the agendas don't need to be as rigid, as structured, um, as planned. Whereas if the groups are larger, they're gonna need to be so. And so that's where, um, where the balance will shift towards Lene and bringing in some more of those uh, structured facilitation tools that we use in other contexts. Um, of course, the, the task group co-chairs are, as I mentioned on an earlier slide, um, really the folks that we want to be setting the tone for the conversation, introducing the major ideas, um, because the relationships that we're trying to build here are, are among you all. Um, so we want to support that. But if it ends up that we're working with larger groups, then we probably will play a, a larger role in facilitation. Does that answer your question? I, I think so. <laughs> I, I mean, I think um, the, the, the between the lines is the, how prepared each of us need to be going into these meetings. Yeah. I, Ooh, I, sorry, go ahead, Laura. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that we do need to, um, I think the task group co-chairs with their, with Jim or Lauren need to meet, once we set up our first task group meetings, need to probably have a, an offline meeting to kind of hash 
some details out. You'll have a better sense of who's going to be there. We'll have had the intro meeting or the kickoff meeting. So we'll have a sense of what questions people may have or, or things like that. Um, but it's definitely, I, at least I envision it being kind of a joint effort with where we're relying on the expertise of Jim and Lauren to help us figure out the best way to facilitate the meeting. Um, and the intro meeting, I think will be much more of like a webinar presentation where we're just sort of presenting, Stephanie's gonna lead, Stephanie will be sort of the MC of that, kind of giving an introduction to why we're here in the first place, talk a little bit about the goals and then talk about the, pro like I, myself or Andra or someone can present just the quick update of ECAC. Um, Gazikaya and Ashwin can present the community. Uh, how do we have it written here? Um, and then uh, Jim or Lauren will present the process and the different groups and how all of that's going to work. Yeah, and Jesse, I was just going to say, I think, I don't think it, that one or the other will require more or less preparation on your part, honestly. Um, I think with the larger groups, it, it might end up just that you'll lean on us a little bit more. But in, in terms of the, the level of preparation that the committee uh, co-chairs will need to, to do, I think it will be the same either way. I guess I, I have a question. Um, to the extent that um, we have our own ideas about our sector areas, and to the extent that we've done research with the with the communities that the consultants provided for us uh, for purposes of comparison, it seems obviously like those things are very valuable for us to be bringing to the meetings, right? Of course, why wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, Darcy. This is Jim. I don't think I understand what you uh, what your what 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 it is you're saying there. Are you concerned about not being able to share expertise or? I'm not, uh, not concerned. I'm just saying the question was, do we need to be prepared? Oh, and, um, and I think, yeah, I think the answer to that is that um, uh, the answer is sort of a general, heck yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, the you as committee members have done a lot of preparation already and bring sort of walk into the task force or the task group. See now, see now you've got me confused about what they are again. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, process um, all of that work and the experience and all the different other committees you were working on as will other committee members, right? I mean, other task group members will be also similarly walking in with quite a lot of, uh, of stuff that they bring to this process and the the real trick will be to uh in the process of three meetings and some homework to kind of form that into some strategies that have actions that are grounded in what the is going on in the town and what's happening in the committees and are highly aspirational uh and uh, you know will grab people as a as a uh, sort of an ongoing plan idea um, that the the work I don't think is going to be in the process of coming up with the ideas. The work is going to be in the process of kind of forming the ideas into something that that is uh, is a plan essentially. And that's where we're you know really looking to you committee members. You know, Linnean really I think Lauren said that beautifully, which is the. <laughs> This is not our plan. We're just here to help you guys get there. Uh, and um, uh, it is your plan. It's the town's plan. And so, you know, how that process unfolds is really how do we, how do we bring all of these things together, all of us, because we all share responsibility. How do we bring all these things together into something that is cohesive and thoughtful and, and aspirational, as I say. Jim, if I could real quick, uh, and Darcy, I just want to say that I think the idea is that if you have some very specific ideas from some plans, that's why you'll be working with one of the facilitators, that you'll work with Jim or, or Lauren to, 
to help you identify what are the things you want to bring to the meeting and how you want to incorporate that. So that's part of what all that planning is. And that's why you have them to work with because they'll help you sort of um, figure that out where your ideas fit in with bringing other people's ideas in as well. Right. I guess I'm just saying that, that if, if any of the members of the committee here are thinking about what they need to do to prepare, you know, one, one thing that was very helpful to me is to look at those best practices in other communities. That was very helpful. Yeah. And so I'm just saying that that's why you can talk to your, um, you know, to Lauren or Jim, each group can, and sort of flush that out. You know, who, who wants to incorporate what best practices from what community and you can all work with them to sort of figure that out. Sounds Again, good. you'll have time. You can do that ahead of time. Yeah, we definitely have time. We, already, we, we, we should already be doing that. <laughs> so um, the task groups, and I think we need to, um, we sort of had that breakout group and some of the task groups co-chairs met together I know Darcy and I met, we sent information to Lauren. Lauren's been helpful in taking that information and um, making edits to the document. So we, we and then we kind of got off that for a week or so. So now we're getting back into, we, we've got the plan set for these, these pre-meetings and sort of kind of starting now into our next e full ECAC meeting we're going to need to be really working towards being ready for the task group meetings of the, the with the you know sort of nuts and bolts of what we're trying to do because at the end of the day we're trying to make a climate action plan and have priorities for the next 5 years and so for all of these sectors yeah <laughs> Yeah, Andrea. Yeah. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, I, I'm having trouble seeing the um, screen at the same time as hearing people talk. Um, so, will we, our next meeting is um, after all of the intro meetings. And, um, so I'm thinking ahead to on the 30th, will we be able to tell people when our first task group meetings will be? Um, and then on the second one we meet, will we be going over our plans for our first meeting so that we should be coming prepared for that discussion and, and have input into each other's Plans. So I think the answer is sorry, Lauren. Um, I think that me per I I personally feel that we're not going to be re given the amount of work, given the fact that we're just going to all have to be in these pre meetings. <laughs> Um, I don't want to assume that anybody on the committee is going to have more than those three hours of, of, of time to do committee work between now and our meeting on the first. So I think that the meeting on the first is really going to have to be us getting ready for the task group, the first task group meetings, which will happen later in the month. Um, yeah. Sorry, if I can jump in. Yeah, I was just going to say um, it will probably be important for the next committee meeting to be focused on that, especially because um, by then we'll know who's involved in the process, who's said yes. Um, and at that point, we can define the task groups. We can say definitively, these people are in this group, and etc. cetera. Um, so that's when we'll be able to say, that's when we'll be able to schedule effectively. I think we probably want to aim to have meetings with the co-chairs and their consultants that first week of July um, to plan out those the agendas for those first meetings. And this is probably something to talk about as a group. So Laura, I, I defer to you, but in terms of um, it might be a good idea to set a target week 
for when we want to have those first task group meetings, even if we don't have specific dates, just so that we can give people a ballpark. What do you think? Or others? Yeah, I think that um, that makes sense. Although I feel like I've thrown out weeks several times and then it quickly <laughs> gone past that time frame. So, um, I mean, so we're going to send out the invitation and we're going to invite everybody to the meeting on the 30th. And that's going to happen, Stephanie said, as soon as possible. By Monday is the goal. Um, Early in the week. Yeah. So I think at the meeting on the 30th, I don't think we'll be ready to say this task group is meeting this day, but I think we should want to be able to say, you'll be getting an email from us with a doodle poll about your ta which task group you're in and a doodle poll for when you want to meet. I think that should be our goal for the meeting on the 30th and we should send that out the following day or two. Does that sound like a good time frame for everybody? Do we have a timeline, a required timeline of when, when the meetings have to happen? So after the July 1st, oh, sorry, go ahead, Stephanie. I was just gonna say, um, the only requirements we really have right now are these four meetings before June 30th. Other than that, everything else happens after July 1st, everything like, and then we have until um, the grant is, um, has to be completed. Everything has to be done by the end of May in 21. Yes. So the deadline is the end of May, 2021. <laughs> and we're also still on track with the original timeline um, that had the task group meetings happening um, from June through August. So we're a little bit later, but um, if the three task group meetings happen before the end of August, then we're still uh, on track with our original timeline. Just one one option, because uh, I know we we meet as a task as a as a um, committee um, on the first, um, and I'm wondering if everybody's convened by Zoom on the thirtieth, um, whether there might be um, some good Zoom process by which people can just fill in a spreadsheet on at that point or something of dates that um, they are available or not available for the task force meetings. Uh, and then we can convene when we, part of our agenda on the first as a committee would be just to set those dates um, and, and make sure they're, they're um, fine with the we, um, the committee members um, that are on those each of those groups. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, a, a doodle poll with that many people and different task task groups. Uh, of course, I wouldn't do it, but but uh, somebody else would do it. But I, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, it's that can be a problem. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a mess. Um, but no, that's a great idea. Either uh, uh, you know a, a Google form or. Uh, could use a poll structure, whatever. I mean, we can figure out, that's a great idea. We can figure out a, a way to do that that's fast and not super obtrusive uh, and doesn't, you know, divert everybody for 20 minutes during a one hour meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a great, great thought. Perfect. Andra, did you have something to, to add? No, okay. Um, Lauren, Great. why don't you keep rolling? Yeah, sorry, Lauren. Yeah, um, so this is actually the last slide um, that we have to, to cover. Um, and the last point there was just to reiterate that we're inviting people into the overall process. And then we're going to figure out what the constitution of the individual task groups are um, once we know who's confirmed. So yeah, that's, that's all I've got. Any last questions? Great. So um, to get to this. Yeah. Awesome. So just to reiterate, I think on, so everybody should have saved time on their calendar for the 27th and 28th. Um, and we'll get more info about sign-in and things like that closer to the date, the time. 
Um, on the 30th, we are shooting for somewhere between 5.30 and 7, but we're going to get a sense of, um, but we'll look to Stephanie for, for that time. And again, this is something that um, we've course encouraged all ECAC members to come to, but there's, they will also be recorded. So um, if you miss it, it's, that's okay. Um, the, and during that meeting, I think that's a great idea. We're gonna, that will be a meeting that everybody comes to. We're gonna try to, we, we, we wanna encourage, so in the invitation that's gonna go out next week, we're gonna let people know we're having this intro meeting. It'd be really great if you can join. We'll let them know that it is recorded, but we, we want to try to get people to join. During that meeting, we're gonna go over to Duane's point, sort of, you know, that there's these different task groups that they focus in these different areas. This is what we're hoping to accomplish um, over the next three meetings. Um, and we will, I think, I would suggest that um, we pull together some slides for that, that we can circulate to the group ahead of time. Um, so I, um, sorry, I've got a kid yelling in the background. Um, then on the first, which is our I, next. I was week, worried that was my kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love the sound of other people's kids. <laughs> um, it's a every other day fight about getting out of the bath. Um, the uh, on the first, which is our next ECAC meeting, I think we're going to spend the first bit of that sort of debriefing from our meetings that we've had, and then the second half I think will be focused on looking forward. So hopefully at that point we, if we do the poll during the meeting on the thirtieth. Hopefully we'll be able to schedule at least the first task group meetings for all the task groups. We'll be able to make sure the co-chairs and the co consultants have scheduled time to get together. Um, as far as co-chairs, there's a couple things that we should be, we should be doing. Um, there's the list of strategic priorities that Lauren and team have put together for us. Um, I know Darcy and I have gone through that list. Darcy's added um, to Darcy's point earlier, Darcy's added priorities that she found from some of the other plans that we've reviewed. Um, so I would encourage you, if you have the time to, to look, and you haven't done it yet, to look at that list, to look at the plans and figure out if there's anything else you want to add or any other way you want to format that um, for your specific task group. And we'll spend the, the, the rest of the time on the first really prepping for um, our first task group meetings. We'll also have a better sense at that point, the numbers that will be in the different task groups. So we can maybe talk a, in a little bit more detail about the different ways we might facilitate that conversation. Sorry, I also just wanted to add, um, there were requests from several folks to, to reorganize those um, prior, or strategies that were previously developed into themes. Um, so I'm happy to do that for all the groups. Great. Yeah, it may be helpful, Lauren, if you're working on that to maybe send it back out to, or send it through Stephanie back out to everybody um, in the next week or so. So people. Yeah, have definitely. And Lauren and Jim, I think we should talk early, like maybe on Monday, uh, if we could, and we can sort of talk about some of these things. That sounds good. Um, I would just encourage everybody to go ahead and read through those. Uh, previous plans that were sent out. Um, there's lots of great ways things are organized and themes and uh, there's just a ton of ton of really good stuff. Obviously, they're for other places, uh, but that's okay. Uh, they're, they're highly valuable. We want to make sure that what happens is really about Amherst, but the, the themes I think are pretty universal. Okay. Um, is it possible that we may end early for the first time in history? Let's see. Anybody have any <laughs> other things to add? No. <laughs> Go jinx it. <laughs> All right. 
Um, well, thank you, everybody. I think this was a really great meeting. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you next weekend. All right. Thanks, Thanks you all. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Nice to see you.